Oh, I'm in your chair. Yeah, Paul, you're you're here. Good evening. We're going to call the meeting to order. I apologize for uh, being late. We had to finish up an executive session. Um, at this time, I turn it over to Ms. Piazza, who's going to introduce our student from Cheston, who's going to lead us in the pledge. Good evening. It's my great pleasure tonight to be here with you and have one of our outstanding students with me. This is Lamar Fennell. Lamar is one of our most outstanding students. He's very actively involved. In fact, tonight he and his mother came from a cooking class that is held at our school, so he's multi-talented. He is involved with poetry and the Friends of the Library at Easton Public Library. He's part of our drama club, our chorus, our ORF, our band, uh, soccer, and a myriad of other things. But most, the most impressive thing about Lamar is that he is an outstanding academic student. He is what we would consider one of our most high achieving students and really flourishes in the classroom. He has also written me a proposal to hold a talent, uh, not a talent show, a fashion show tonight. So here is his debut, our very fashionable Lamar Fennell. <laughs> Please rise for the pledge. Everybody, the flag is in the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, um, Joan, am I to call Gary? Cell phone, 217. I apologize. Miss Ellison couldn't make it today. We're trying to call her on the phone. Uh, Carrie, it's Frank. The meeting has started. Are you uh, able to participate? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. We just finished the uh, pledge. Joan, do you have roll recorded? Yes, yeah, thank you. All right. Recognitions. Mr. Superintendent. Yes. Uh, tonight, we'd like to start our meeting with several, uh, recognizing several individuals. First of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Caitlin Anderson. Uh, is Caitlin here? Come on up, Caitlin. Uh, we'd like to recognize Caitlin because uh, she's one of uh, the few individuals that we've, re, uh, we've ever met here in Easton who have reached the um, ultimate in Girl Scouting called the Girl Scout Gold Award. And if you recall, some of you, uh, several months ago, we recognized several Boy Scouts who uh, received the Eagle Scout Award. And uh, equal time for the Girl Scouts. Uh, this is a great achievement, quite honestly. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what you do and what's required with the Girl Scout Gold Award. And Caitlin, I was wondering if you could share that with us. Could you tell us what you do uh, to earn that? 
Okay, well, for um, a Girl Scout Gold Award, it is um, a leadership award that requires at least 80 hours of community service. And you have to usually create a project of some sort that gives back to your community. So for my Gold Award, I put together a, a strings workshop at Barnes & Noble's for kids between the ages of 5 and 13. I had different instruments, like such as violins, cellos, violas, and basses all in the children's section and I had some of my friends from like also in my Girl Scout troop and then in the orchestra they were helping me because you weren't allowed to have family members help you out with this project and um, my advisor was my cello teacher and she helped me contact the Allentown Symphony lady and she helped me with this instrumental petting zoo that they they what they do is they allow you to like borrow instruments and so we, it took me all summer to do this project to come up with it and find a location and then advertise for it. And it was about two, three days long. And for each, each person that, that helped me, they, were, they played an instrument. So I played the cello, so that's what I helped out with. I had a bass player and a violin player and a viola player. And so I broke off into sections and we just rotated. And the kids, we taught them the different parts of the instrument, the strings, the body of it. And then we played a few little like songs that they would know, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or Old MacDonald Had a Farm. And then we would actually let the kids play it so they can get a feel for it. Um, and then at the very end of that, we would come together and play a song together as a group to, so they could see how if they maybe even joined orchestra or even band, they don't have to be a string instrument, but like how you can like make music from that. And so it seemed like it actually helped. There were a couple of students who came who were actually looking to find an instrument to play for school. So they told me that they really enjoyed it and that it helped out a lot for them. All right. Thank you. Uh, great job, Caitlin. And it sounds like uh, you and I need to have a talk about your future as a possible teacher in uh, maybe the Easton School District in the music department. So uh, on behalf of the school board and the administration and our teachers, we'd like to rec uh, offer this letter of commendation to you for earning such uh, a distinguished honor in Girl Scouts. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, next, while I'm standing, I'll, uh, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Juan Sanchez. Juan, please come forward. You might recognize Juan by um, uh, the article that was in the paper, but he's uh, got a tremendously significant um, award lately. Uh, one of the students across the nation who received a Gates Millennium Scholarship. And so the board uh, would like to recognize you uh, for uh, being selected into such an, uh, an, a fabulous program and, and uh, for your perseverance. And um, Mr. Pinnebone, would you like to uh, give Juan the uh, commendation? And Juan, would you like to offer any thoughts or remarks to the uh, people gathered together? Absolutely, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I just wanted to thank the district for offering so many extracurricular activities. I think that played a huge role in uh, the reason why I received the scholarship. Um, second and most, I want to thank my family for all the support that they gave me um, and individuals within the district who helped me receive the scholarship. Um, one of them is here today, Mr. Sames, who helped me uh, gather my thoughts and really helped me with the essays. Uh, there were eight of them and uh, it, was, it was a long process, so I truly appreciate that from him. Um, also, Mr. Felton, uh, which was one of the recommendations who uh, helped me get the scholarship, and Mayor Salpanto. Um, I truly thank them both for uh, putting in a good word, and I just w really support everyone who you know who's helped me throughout the journey here in, in the Eastern Area District. Um, and it's it's an honor to be here today and uh, receive such an honor and make the make the school look proud. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations, Juan. Juan uh, mentioned uh, Mr. Sames. Mr. Sames is here. And quite frankly, from the very start of, of uh, this journey, and since uh, I had a chance to, uh, to talk with Justin and understand how he went from learning about the Gates Scholarship till now, that name came up uh, uh, over and over again that Mr. Sames uh, 
distinguished himself as not only a teacher, but as a mentor and as an encourager of one in terms of the Gates Scholarship. So, Mr. Sames, would you come forward? We'd like to commend you for taking your position so seriously that you were able to achieve such a wonderful thing for Juan Sanchez. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> And, Mr. President, under Superintendent's report, what we'd like to do is uh, introduce uh, Mrs. Klein from the high school, who would like to uh, do a short presentation on our FBLA students and the program there. Um, I also would like to offer a letter of commendation. Mrs. Klein applied for and received a grant for $5,000 to be used for um, her uh, course in, in uh, personal finance, and the $5,000 grant will help her to purchase materials. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. this moment to introduce our officers, Toyo Abayo. Toyo is our historian and parliamentarian. Janet Alvarez is our secretary. Marlene Lee is our reporter. Tom Satchel is our treasurer. And last but not least, our president, Eli Bolas, is going to conduct the presentation right. for you. Thank you, Mrs. Klein. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Elias Bolas. I am the president of FBLA. And we just wanted to give you a quick rundown of how this year went for our chapter and sort of what we do for FBLA. So, again, we are a local business club here at the high school. We are similar to DECA, which Ron represents. Um, we do prepare, try to prepare our members for the real business world through various activities, which I will talk about later. This is a national organization with 250,000 members that cover all states in the United States and we're really proud of that large number is continuously growing so now here's sort of our six pillars that constitute FBLA and what we try to bring out of the club between leadership fundraising community service social and professional development and competitive events and each one has its own part in FBLA that we try to highlight for each student. So here's one of our, there's a picture of one of our fundraising events, our dodgeball tournament that we host every year. So some of our members working the table. Now our FBLA dodgeball tournament is our main fundraising event for the year. Now as you can see there in the picture, that is the winning team from the tournament. So they all got awarded gift cards to Sheets. So that was a nice little gift for them. And a big part of FBLA is the community service aspect. So a few different activities we have here. Our members were working at Safe Harbor and Easton one day. And then our state project for PA FBLA was Donate Life, an or a organ donation organization. So again, we helped at Safe Harbor. And then with Donate Life, we had a, a strong partnership. And for the first time, we had members from the organization who have been affected by Donate Life come to a, a membership meeting and speak to us. And in that picture down there on the right side is our officer team, but on the left is the family that has been truly stricken by organ donation. Between them, they've experienced about 10 organ donations between the two children themselves. So it's very inspiring to hear from people who have been affected like that. And they're a very strong, tight-knit family, and hearing from them was very, very powerful. And then here's just some of our other activities. We were at the Palmer Park Mall during the winter. Uh, over a few days, we were gift wrapping and collecting donations for PA, FBLA. And then on the right there is a group we had for the March of Dimes up at Dorney Park in Allentown. 
Then another big part of FBLA is the competitive event section where members can participate in certain events that they find to their interest that range between business and law and other aspects. So the regional competition took place at L Tri C this year and then if you do well enough there you can move on to the state competition at the Hershey Lodge. And then this is just sort of a breakdown of all the different seminars and conferences uh, members have the ability to go to and then there's just a few examples of the competitions that you can take part in. And there's differences between group presentations and individual competitions and then how you can progress on to the different conferences. And this is sort of the, the one slide that I really like to highlight because this is what makes me the most proud as the president. This year we set a record for the number of members in the organization at 93. That was a big uh, part of it. We were able to raise $500 for Donate Life PA, our state project this year. Also, we were able to raise $1,230 for the March of Dimes between various activities we conducted at the high school, between the students and the teachers. That was a big part. And then finally, the 300 hours of community service between our members was a, a very, very powerful thing. And we try to preach that at FBLA, and we find it very, very inspiring to have our children do, or our members, sorry, to do that. And then last, for the eighth year in a row, we have a student moving on to the national conference. Uh, Janet Alvarez back there is going on to these nationals at Nashville, Tennessee to participate in an event. So eight years in a row we've had someone advance. That's a very, very good thing for our club. So again, there's Jan who's qualified for Microsoft Office pilot program. She's very, very good at all the computer stuff. I'm not that good at it, so I leave it up to her. But we're very, very proud to have another member continue the, the tradition. And last, this is just how we keep in contact with our members. If you want to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, go right ahead. We'd very much appreciate it. But that's the sort of way I have to say thank you very much. Thank you. It's very impressive when, uh, when you see that and hear which, what uh, your organization has done. I congratulate the officer team and also um, best wishes to Janet, uh, you know, as you go for your um, your trip to Nashville. Thank you all for doing what you're doing to uh, help make Easton High School and the community better. It's great, great, uh, great work. Uh, last but not least, what I'd like to do now is uh, try to give a, a public overview of the significant uh, parts of the contract or the fight. I guess more correctly, the memo, uh, memorandum of understanding that we have uh, reached with our teachers association. And I've asked Mrs. Mealy to come back again this week uh, since she had the um, uh, courage to do it before. Asked her if she would come back this week and uh, share with us the elements of, of this, uh, the significance of this memorandum of understanding so that interested taxpayers and all the board members can see uh, how this uh, is going to influence our district in a positive way over the next several years. Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt. Uh, tonight I will present to you uh, the district's proposal, which has been accepted by the Eastern Area Education Association and will be voted on this evening by our board. I did a presentation for you at the May committee meeting, and at that time I presented both the association's proposal to the district and the district's proposal to the association. I think it's fair to say that at that time at the committee meeting, we were at a bit of a stalemate. Um, however, at the committee meeting, there was a pre presentation made by a group of potential retiree teachers that presented a retirement incentive. So immediately upon receiving the retirement incentive from that group, the administration went back to the table and started looking at numbers because it was always about getting to the deficit number and wasn't about how we got there, but we needed to look at different ways to get there. So at the, at the end of the week of the committee meeting, the, the district and the association leadership were already sitting back down at the table to review a potential new proposal. The following week, the association took that proposal to its membership and it was voted on and approved by 66% of the membership. So I will briefly go through with you this evening what the proposal was, 
Uh, much of what you'll see here on the screen tonight is similar to what was on uh, at the committee meeting. Not much of the proposal changed. However, one part of the proposal that changed was, like I said before, the replacement of the retirement incentive, um, replacing the buyback of days that was in the original proposal. That was something that in the conversations with union leadership, that that was something that was not palatable by a, a majority of the association. So the retirement incentive was able to replace that in the proposal. Another addition in red was the medical contribution increase of $10 per pay, and that was added into year one of the proposal. Uh, everything else remained the same, including the no furlough language in year one, the salary freeze, and the reinstatement of EPFED. In year two of the proposal, this is the same as it was in the original proposal. So again, you'll see that there is a salary freeze with no step or column movement. You will also see that there are no furloughs in year two as well. So this proposal was able to reach that same agreement with no furloughs over the course of the next two years, only through attrition. You'll also note the in introduction of the medical deductibles, which was in the first proposal as well. And the piece there at the bottom states that if the two-year agreement was reached, that the board would allow the teachers not to report for the last three days of this present school year. And I want to just reinforce that those are non-instructional days. Those were in-service days that were moved due to snow, and that was uh, in a good faith measure by the board to say that the teachers do not have to report for those three days for the present school year. So some important notes are that this plan balances the budget for two years with no furloughs other than through attrition and leaves the district with a manageable deficit for 2016-17. And at this time, that deficit is projected to be $700,000. I can wholeheartedly, honestly stand here before you and say that this leaves the school district in a position that is the most stable financial position that it has been in in recent history. A $700,000 deficit two years out is something that the district at this point is calling manageable because it's something that we haven't experienced in a long time. And in order to meet the goal of a three-year plan, a majority of the savings must be generated in the first year in order to reduce that base immediately. So we looked at the salary freeze and the retirement incentive as a means to reduce that base immediately going into year two of this plan. But again, it leaves us with that manageable deficit in year three and equates to no furloughs over the course of the next two years. Were there any questions from the board? All right. Thank you. If you would, just hang tight for a brief moment as a small conference is going on. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Amelia, that was one of the best presentations I've ever heard. Thank you very much. Um, sorry about that, but uh, there was a point of uh, discussion that we had to uh, have at that particular moment. So uh, I uh, apologize greatly for all of us having to walk in and out during that uh, period of time. Uh, but we did want to uh, have her go over the elements of that contract and um, uh, that would be the first thing. The second thing is I would like uh, Mr. Simonette, if he could, to offer just, an, uh, once again, a brief overview of some of the highlights financially of what uh, we believe is in store for the district um, in terms of the two-year agreement. Okay. Thank you. Um, I won't get up to the podium because uh, I believe my presentation will be even shorter than Ms. Amelie's. 
Uh, we've been through the numbers for a number of months here with all different scenarios and projections. But what this proposal did for the budget and for the district um, has put us in a, I guess since I've been here and, and for a number of years before that, one of the best situations moving forward and planning out at least three years. And with that, I mean in the 14-15 school year, without uh, reduction of staff, except through attrition, we are at a balanced budget with nothing coming from surplus. For next year, as we indicated uh, through the scenarios and throughout the process, with the going to index and taking money out of surplus, we will also be at a balanced budget. Now that 1250 if you recall, all the plans that we previously talked about we're looking to take 750000 each year for three years out of fund balance. With this proposal, and was also one of the uh, uh, main functions of getting this proposal, and the, the, one of the major proponents was to do as much as you can in the first year, thus allowing us to plan more for the future years. So instead of 750 for year one and two, we're looking at 1250000 in the second year. In the third year, we're looking at bringing that back down to the 750, again going to index, and our deficit projection is under $700,000, which in the past has always been over $5 million. And I know we talked about uh, the, the term manageable deficit. Over those next two years, there's going to be things in place, uh, practices, procedures, that uh, quite frankly this administration feels that we won't even be looking at that number uh, barring any major loss in revenue. With the no furlough and the agreement on that proposal, the only thing that's going to impact our budget that we know of, of any consequence, is of course the pension. The first year it's th three million two, second year two nine, and the third year one million uh, six fifty. Now we also know, and we're hoping, maybe against hope, that there will be changes to those numbers and the pension obligation from the district will be uh, reduced from those numbers. So a quick look over the last couple years in the budgets. A little over $132 million we spent in 2012-2013. This year's budget is 134 uh, 313 and next year we're looking at a little over 136 million and we're looking at as I said nothing from fund balance and we have we do not have a deficit for next year also presented this slide in the last uh, committee meeting but just to reiterate what we're looking at for the average assessed home in the Eastern School District is a hundred and thirty dollar increase in taxes Any questions or any comments? Thank you, Mr. Simonetta. Any questions or comments from the board? I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the representatives from the Easton, uh, the board and the administration. That was Katie Vitro, Alyssa Emili, Mike Simonetta, and John Castrovinci, who joined our board members in representing the district, and also uh, thank the EAEA reps who uh, represented the association because of their goodwill and the efforts be behind the, um, the interest in all of us to try to avoid what looked like a uh, instructional and financial crisis and catastrophe. Uh, our academy will remain open. Our high school schedule will remain intact. Our extracurriculars will all remain as they are. Um, we will look at essentially offering the same instructional opportunities for students again next year and the year after, we hope. Um, however, we will be looking at trying to absorb those losses of positions through attrition. That's going to impact on class size, but I do believe that ultimately um, no one can argue with the fact that uh, trying to compensate for the loss of uh, positions through attrition 
is far better than having to send people out into the uh, community without jobs. And um, I appreciate the efforts that everyone made, and thank you for that. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Renhart. Communications. Uh, we're going to go to number five, reports. And Mr. Ryder with IU-20. No report. Report. Ms. Price, library. There was a meeting on May 13th, and um, basically the mission of the uh, Eastern Public Library is to promote literacy, lifelong learn learning, and contribute to the development of an active and informed community of citizens. Um, they proposed a budget for the July 1st, 2014 through June 30th, 2015 for $1,726,470, and that's the same as last year. And um, some nice things that are going on is that uh, the Junior Friends of the Library um, hosted a gaming day for children aged five to nine, and they had a really big um, Candyland game going. And uh, the um, oh, the Young Adult I mean, yeah, Young Adult Fest. It's called the YA Fest. Was held at Palmer Branch of the Library on Saturday, April nineteenth, and forty-eight young adults authors um, were there and uh, the, and uh, the friends of the library and Kiwanis Club of the Palmer Township they granted thousand dollars for the event and Barnes and Noble brought uh, many books to the event and they are selling over five thousand two hundred dollars worth of the author's books and a portion of what was ever sold went back to our library so that's good and um, so it was just a lot of things are going on in the library that I didn't know about until I found out <laughs> a few weeks ago. Okay, well, that's basically it. Um, Mr. Reinhardt was also there, unless you'd like to say anything. No, thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ms. Burke. Okay. Uh, letter C, CIT, Mr. Ryder Vanderberg and or OB. Uh, not too much going on um, other than the primary election of our new business manager. Um, we, we did fill that position, uh, and we did appoint a new board member to, to our board, Mr. Robert Obey, um, here on the side. Um, Mr. Riley, do you have anything to, uh, to add? Okay, that's, uh, that's about it. Thank you. Uh, community College, Mr. Fainel. Thank you. Uh, we met, and one of the processes we go through is annually reviewing various programs to see of their value how, often, what, how they service the community and everything else. And uh, we're looking at one of the new programs to start up will be the Public Health Associates and Applied Science Program. But at the same time, we also find that sometimes the programs are becoming obsolete, uh, again, based on attendance and things. And so we discontinue some of those. And again, that occurred this time. Uh, diagnostic <coughs> medical sonography is one of those uh, that is not as popular as it used to be. Along with that, um, we met some of the new presidential ambassadors uh, from the various school districts. They interview students, they apply for this, and then as different events go on at the college, and typically there's representation from all the school districts, uh, sometimes multiple from some school districts. Um, additionally, uh, we talked about the Mon new Monroe facility opening later this year. Uh, pro progress is continuing to be made there. Uh, we also had the budget. Uh, it was approved by all eight districts, and therefore the college adopted the, the final budget uh, for this year, for the upcoming school year. And tonight on our agenda, um, as occurs every couple of years, uh, are the reappointment of board members or new board members to the trustee board. And we have a list where it's typical that all the school districts get to vote on all the representatives, such as we had agreed to appoint John Squasha. Well, all the other school districts get to vote on John just like we vote on all their members too tonight. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Fainel. Letter E, the Foundation for Eastern Schools, Mr. Vandenberg. No report. Okay. Letter F, the Charles Shrin Science and Technology Initiative, Mr. Vandenberg. Um, the Shrin uh, Foundation, that uh, is uh, still in the formative, well, let me not say formative. Uh, we're making a lot of progress um, in that regard. Um, we are, you know, just putting our plans together for the next uh, few months. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ellison, do you have a legislative report? 
Um, yes, I just, I just wanted to give an update to the board that um, they most recently sent out a brochure of facts and figures for 2013 for the school districts in in um, Pennsylvania. They give stats regarding um, number of enrollments and school district um, makeup as far as programming, buildings that um, are within the school districts of Pennsylvania and salaries. Um, so if anyone wants this brochure, wants to look at it, I have it. I'm not sure if um, Mrs. Schaefer might also have a copy of this. But anyway, I have this if anyone would like to take a look at it or get a copy. Um, and then also um, there is legislation um, in conversation at the legislature level regarding special education funding formulas, and um, they are trying to move forward some legislation regarding that. So be aware of it, and um, perhaps um, send communication if you would like um, regarding that that particular topic. And the only other thing I wanted to bring up, and it really isn't really PSDA or legislation, but I just wanted to mention that I did go to the Celebration National Library Week at Eastern Area Public Library. Um, they invited the um, community leaders to a breakfast, um, and I did participate in it. I wanted to say that it was a really great tour of the library. Um, we also got to see the flag that is a historical flag um, that is encased in a special place within the library, which anyone is, um, I think, with special appointments, they're able to see that. So I just wanted to thank the library for inviting us as board members down for the breakfast and just let everyone know that it was a phenomenal um, tour. Thank and that's you. it. Thank you, Ms. Ellison. Mr. Cuck, is our student president here this evening? Thank you. Sorry, I'm back one more time. But um, just real quick, we're winding down pretty much for student council for the year. The freshman, sophomore, and junior classes are finishing up their years. They're mostly doing t-shirt sales just to raise funds. The senior class is finishing up prom and the senior picnic preparations. And that's pretty much it for the end of the year. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gilligan uh, couldn't be here tonight from the PTA. Uh, also, her representatives could not be here. Um, she sent me a, a message. The PTAs have been very busy in all the schools in the last month, um, getting ready for the summer, helping our staff and uh, with the students. One thing that they wanted to mention, uh, they're struggling to find volunteers and donations for the post prom May 31st. They're very concerned that the event will need to be canceled without enough help. Um, the post-prom is, is a place that our students can go. Um, you know, obviously there's no alcohol, no, no things that would uh, danger the students. They can have a good time, safe time, and, um, you know, hopefully we can get some volunteers and donations there so we can keep that on as scheduled. And we'll go to Ms. Broadhead, the EAEA. probably more excited for me to be standing up here than my seven-year-old who gets his mommy back in a few short days. Um, I just wanted to publicly say thank you to a group of veteran teachers who came forward and made something happen. They, I spent a lot of time with them over the last couple weeks and I've learned a ton from them. I'm not saying that I'm now a retirement specialist, but I did let them know that one day when it becomes my turn to retire, I'm fully educated on what the process looks like. 150 years from now, it'll probably be different when I'm about ready to retire, so. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you to them, and um, on a personal note, it's always interesting when our students get up here and share their projects for the year, and the places they've donated to, and I think it's amazing that we continue to facilitate these things, you know. Any, any project that a student has in mind, this district makes happen, and that's a wonderful thing because they're wonderful groups that benefit from the work our students do. So, thank you. And um, Helen Jones, with the bus drivers, has indicated she has no business this evening. So we're going to move to number six.
and we had no committees um, last month or this month pardon me except for finance and the attached minutes are there and at this time we would uh, like to hear from anyone in the public who would like to be heard on agenda items only Mr. Anderson did its work so very well that they stand alone on their own merits. And if you read the proposals, I did sign in. Mike. You've got some great proposals, plural. Um, this is not about a 73-year-old teacher complaining about a $5,000 pittance. I don't know who threw that one into the plate. I didn't. You didn't. But I really wonder who did and what their motives were to divert us from the real problem. Um, I can do the break. Somebody's going to ask, why did she elect? Well, I don't know. Ask her. She went to Lehigh. I didn't. Um, I can do the graphs. Um, but her answer may be, we're not going to have this debate at age 75. I will make my own decision. Thank you very much. And some of us are married to women like that. They have their own will. Uh, the board proposal, actually, Mr. Pinamone, is a good one. There's some things I think Mr. Seminetta should have had or could have had because you've had an outstanding team on your side. Um, I grew up on the B-School side of it, and I won't say that it was called Anti-Union 101, but I will say that most of us wound up on that side of the equation. One of them actually wound up uh, on the union side, and he did very well, but uh, you come to your own conclusions. I'm not worried about the management proposal. I'm worried about the union proposal. Um, I can do the math. I think there's, I thought there was $600,000 of gratuitous payments to people already retired. The person who wrote the union one is smarter than I am. Smarter than I ever was sitting in B-Law in Wharton. Put in stuff that I never would have thought to put in and I ran it past some of my friends and said, Drew, he or she is ahead of you. It's got it in there. It's good stuff. I don't like it, but it's good stuff. Um, Mr. Seminetti, you're picking up about a $1 million in contingent liability um, for health care of people already retired because the language that was slipped in there beats you because what's going to happen is if somebody marries somebody 30 years old at 64, you're going to carry them until they're 65. Read it. There's some other stuff in there. Um, now, it's predictable you're going to throw some people in the drink to save the majority. You would have learned that in Organizational Development 101. And I don't mind, but as a taxpayer, I do mind a million dollars worth of stuff that's not properly funded as a gratuitous gift to people who've already retired. I think you could have spent your money far more wisely moving forward to gather some things. Um, now, I've made some comments about there being some age discrimination points in there. I'm sure Mr. Blunt can tell me why they're not in there. I think there's four. I was never a lawyer. I was in management cleaning up behind people who did make those mistakes. They are there. He'll say they're not. That's not the point. The point is, why should we go across this minefield over here at any risk to you? I'm on your side. As a youngster, I went out and played in field marked minefield. That was stupid. And there actually were some friends that didn't come back. Libyan Desert, 19, 1957. Um, but why go to a minefield when there's a different way? Going this way, I don't know. Why would I go there? Going this direction, your solicitor, your solicitor, your management can design a field or a road with no mines in it. It will get you to the same place very quickly, almost zero risks, lower cost, and I submit to you that given you have the option to make two choices, that you A, vote for the good one, and you punt for the marginal one, 
until the right team of your experts designs one with no mines in it. Now, to me, a mine, I mean, no mines means a flat, here it is, take it or leave it. You can have it in green, blue, or red. Take your pick, um, one number, and none of the issues that may or may not be there. Now, I studied this eight years ago. Had a file an inch and a half thick on age discrimination because that was part of my job. I threw the file away years ago. Doesn't mean I don't know what I'm saying. I ask you to take the safe course of action for yourself. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, John Kennedy, and uh, I'd like to thank everyone who was involved in working on the agreement. Um, what a difference two weeks makes. Think about that. Now, I would also like to thank people for the civil tone that they maintained two weeks ago, even in the face of certain outside provocations. Um, the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but any seventh grader can tell you that words can really hurt too. So I, I, I really appreciate the process and the open, openness that people have gone through to, to get this done. Um, the, um, and, 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 and to the teachers, uh, the, the, the freeze, from my point of view, uh, has nothing to do with the quality of your work. Uh, there's actually no way that you can pay a quality teacher too much. But there are restraints in terms of what the community can afford. And sometimes we have to live with those. So I really appreciate the effort that the uh, teachers union has made in uh, making the sacrifices that they're making. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy, can you just sign in for me, please? Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak on agenda items? Yes, sir. My name is Robert Horvath, and I'm here on behalf of Northampton County citizens who are petitioning against further property tax increases. And I'm here tonight because I haven't been able to come to any of the meetings that were held on Tuesday because I worked every Tuesday night during those sessions, and uh, otherwise I would have been here voicing my concerns. and. Uh, we would have had a lot of other people, but the, the point is I'm here tonight to make a, uh, a stand on uh, property tax increases. At this point, I have 101 signatures. There are 15 signatures done on the iPetition, and that is iPetition.com, and there are 86 signatures that I have here signed by, on paper. I have one question before I, uh, I go over uh, my agenda and, uh, and bring it to your attention. Uh, my question is, are all of the property tax increases that you plan on voting on soon beyond the allowable cap? No. 
What is the cap? We were capped at 4%. 4%? Yes, sir. Okay. And how long has it been effective? I'm sorry. How, how long, long has that cap been effective? Mr. Simonetta, when were we notified? I can clarify. Our, our index was 27. The board approved to apply for exceptions, and the state approved uh, $1.1 million, which allowed us to go to 4%. So the answer to my question initially was yes, they were they were uh, proposals, 4% and 2.7% are proposals beyond the cap, excluding the special exceptions. Is that correct? No, the 4% is with the special exceptions. So it was 2.7 was our index, was our cap. With the exceptions, it allowed the district to go to 4%. 4 but if you wouldn't have had the exceptions? Correct. It would yeah. have been 2.7. Yes, okay. So one of the proposals is to raise taxes beyond the cap had you not uh, made that variance, that special exception. Is that correct? Yes, but okay. I don't think that would have been on the table if we didn't already approve I understand of that. approval for that exception. No, I, I understand that. Okay. And uh, is it my understanding that voters have a right with a referendum to uh, have a voice in a matter where when taxes are raised beyond the cap, uh, that they would have a right to vote on that? My understanding is not what the state approved exceptions. If we went beyond that, yes, they would. Okay. We would have to go to a voter referendum. If we went above the 4%. Okay. Well, I'm here tonight to, to, uh, to tell you that no matter how much you raise our property taxes, there, there are people who are hurting having difficulty with the cost of living, living in Easton. And there was a woman who signed this petition who was waiting at Giant for the bus to take her groceries home. There was a man whose home was furnished on a limited basis because he couldn't afford to fully furnish his home. There is a resident of Easton who is paying $2,400 a month for a medication for a skin condition that on top of that he's paying higher deductibles and co-pays as a result of Obamacare and I mean it, it just the list goes on and on I mean there are there's a tattoo shop a local tattoo shop who's been hurting because the economy has been slow and now they're going to be hit with further profit margin burdens. Many people in, who sign this petition are on fixed incomes and they're always faced with financial burdens and again, and this is another burden that will be placed upon them that I wanted to bring to your attention. You know, we have these signatures and we, we would like you to reconsider your vote tonight and and perhaps set another proposal instead of raising taxes to freeze our property taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to be heard for public comment on agenda items? All right. Seeing none, uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the April 15th meeting? Motion. Can I have a second? Second. Discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number nine, executive session report. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number ten, personnel. Letter A is to ratification of agreement between the Eastern Area School District and the EAEA. Mr. President? Mr. Bar Mr. Vandenberg? Are we taking a roll call vote on that one? Um, sure, we can if that's your wish. Okay. And would you, uh, if you wouldn't mind, give an explanation as to uh, what a yay entails and what a nay entails? I will. Thank you. A yes vote is the board's acceptance of the MOU that was presented by Ms. Amelie, uh at the beginning of the meeting that was offered to the teachers union. A majority no or just a no vote is 
not in agreement with that proposal to the teachers union. Uh, Mr. Vandenberg, were you also giving a motion? Uh, sure, why not? All right. Second? Second. All right. Discussion? Yes. Yes. Yes, this is discussion on the MOU. Is there anyone that wanted to speak? I just wanted to say one comment. Yeah, you're first. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make a statement that I do have concerns. Um, I'm grateful that the EAEA was able to come to an agreement um, on this ratification, um, but I do have concerns regarding some components of this, and specifically I do have concerns regarding the increase in taxes that would be um, put forth for this year and for the next two years. So based on that and the fact that there's actually somewhat of an increase based on the um, parts of this agreement, there's an increase in the um, salaries for teachers, even though they are taking a freeze, um, there are increases based on some of the um, components that we would really be agreeing to. That, in addition to the 4% increase in taxes, is something that I'm very concerned about. Um, I'm also concerned about the level of health care that we are going to provide. Um, I would have liked to have seen some very firm figures as to how that was going to come forward. So I am going to be voting no on the, because of this, those statements. Thank you, Ms. Ellison. Um, just a question, clarification. Regarding the figures you would like to see, have you reached out to Mr. Simonetta um, to ask for those figures? Or he was able to give us the figures that we had reached out the email and everything. So okay. I figured as much as we could come forward with at this point, I, I would have liked to see more specific things regarding the, the particular people who are involved in retirement and what those costs would be based on over the next projection of eight years, potentially. And so that, that's just one part of, of my concern. And, and that, if that was the only concern, I probably would be voting for this. But I have concerns with the fact that we, are, we will be required to increase the taxes 4% this year in addition to the, um, the increases in the following year. Thank you, Ms. Ellison. Okay. Is there anyone else? Yes. Mr. Ryder. Bear with me because I'm probably going to be all over the board and I don't mean to. We started this process at a 2.7 threshold cap from the state. To have some flexibility, some objective, to have hopefully open dialogue, we actually voted to go to 4.9. The exceptions then look, are looked at by the state, and I believe the exceptions would have been in special ed and possibly pensions. Special ed, special ed today is critical to fund, supervise, and probably dot every I and cross every T. So to go to an exception in special ed, I have absolutely no problem with that. Yes, I don't want to see a 4% raise. That concerns me. But I think the reality is sometimes, for maybe the first time in several years, that people in this district at least are looking forward and have a plan where we haven't had a plan prior to this. We just look to cut and move on, cut and move on. Increase taxes, increase taxes. Yes, there's an increase in tax. There's some things that concern me with the MOU. One is, yes, the teachers do get a raise because they're only working a 187-day contract, excuse me, 187 out of 190-day contract. It was also, they're, they're going to get three days back this year, so again, they're only working 187 out of a 190-day contract. That concerns me tremendously because last year when we met with the teachers, 
we asked them about the importance of professional development. The term in service we use, use tonight, I don't like the term in service as a, as a former educator. I like the fact that it should be professional development. I, as an ex-principal, do not feel that any teaching union needs 10, this is my opinion, professional development days. We asked to get some back two years ago, or a year ago, realistically. It didn't happen. Because what would have happened is, by getting three days back, we would have saved this district about $900,000. It didn't work. Now, actually, we're looking at, yes, the money's there, I understand that. But we go from 190 working days to 187. That, that bugs me. Another concern that I have is loss of revenue, or I should say potential loss of revenue. If I think of potential loss of revenue, that could be maybe not as much money from the state. Maybe a grant runs out and, well, we know what grants are in state, and state education. They don't work very long. They work great for a short period of time, and then they kind of vanish. The other concern is obviously where a district could lose money is through the charter school process. We have obviously had one challenge through the, through the charter school process, and because there was really not a significant difference in curriculum, it was kind of easy to look at it and say, no, it's not going to fly, because there wasn't really anything different. Obviously, there'll be other charter schools that probably are, well, much more organized and probably have a uniqueness about them that we may be in a position to say, yes, and then as a district, we fund those programs. That's a concern. We did lose 24 teachers. So we can say through attrition, we can say through retirement, we can say anything we want. The reality of it is we did lose 24 teachers. We didn't lose the 50 or 70, whatever that projection is, and obviously that's a big significant difference. But we did lose 24. So there's a lot of things that I looked at and went over the MOU and looked at, said, you know, the, te the teachers, hey, freeze. Well, almost. But what it comes down to me, and, and I've been torn between a yes and no vote and no and yes, back and forth, is the reality is somewhere along the line, as an educator who's been involved in the educational system for 35 and a half years, somewhere there was always the kid factor. And, and based on the kid factor, I would have to say yes to this because that's what we're in this business to do. No, I don't want to nail taxpayers. And, and hopefully those years of the past where we tax increase, tax increase, tax increase, tax increase, and I don't have enough time to go back and say how many years we did that, but the reality of it is with the plan, with some proper projections, I would hope that everybody did their homework appropriately, that there is an end of the line to this structure of taxation. I would also like to look at the state and say, maybe they could support us a little bit. And I did mention last time that fracking, which is now actually part of Webster. Oh my God. But it is tough. It is hard, but in my best interest, as a former educator and as a board member, I still have to look at kids. And if we can save teachers to work with kids, that's professionalism at its best, because I worked with a lot of outstanding teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Mr. Fainel? Frank. Also looking at this, and you know, some of the concerns have been mentioned already, i.e. Uh, the reduction in the days being worked and everything, and yet keeping the same amount of pay, the restoration of EPFED, the extra pay for extra duty and everything being restored, all end up in being positives that have been paid back. I also look at the retirement program and think it was a shame that that retirement program was made part of the deal, that it wasn't kept separate and looked at separately, and that it could continue on and be extended again at different times. Yes, that ends up resulting in uh, some future cuts and everything, or future reductions, if you want to say it that way, 
but it's by their choice then at that point in time. It's not something that we're choosing to do. So those things, you know, are the exception. I think a great job was done as far as saving between, Mike, I think it's between five and six million dollars actually came off the table as actual salaries. Is that correct? Well, a total package. So, uh, you know, we don't know the full impact down the road. We know we're going to have a deficit of the 700,000, and it could be greater, it could be less. It, you know, we do have the retirement issues and everything, not knowing where that may head. But paying, Mike, I think it's $14,000 this year, which can be a climbing as you look at the COBRA rates and everything per teacher. So if you take an average of 85000 per teacher, $14,000, yes, we do have that savings. For the students, it's a good deal because we haven't cut all the teachers. But for the taxpayer, and we'll deal with that shortly, and when it comes to the budget, that's where it hurts the taxpayer. Because the only ones that have totally lost in this case, because at least the ones that have retired, it was their choice, are the actual taxpayers when we look at it. We have retained the, the educational programs and everything. We may change and increase class size. We've maintained the special ed focus and everything in the academy and all. But at the same time, the taxpayers are feeling the hit. That's all I have to add. Thank you, Mr. Fainel. Is there anyone else? Before we move on for a vote, um, I first want to apologize. As the president of this board, I must not have been as clear as I thought I was to my fellow board members with some of the comments that I not only heard tonight, but in the past. I thought I was extremely clear in expressing that we were not in a position as a district of power when we began negotiations. Our two objectives were to save staff and maintain the educational integrity of this district. So as we hear, could we have done as a district much better? Absolutely. Did, were we in a position to do much better and to go after this or go after that? No, we weren't. Now, I feel for the taxpayers and the 4%. Throughout the whole process, when 4% was mentioned, I was a no vote. As Mr. Horvath pointed out to some of the struggling business owners and residents, um, Mr. Horvath, you know, I know exactly what you're saying. I haven't seen it. I haven't heard about it. I've lived it for 34 years. My parents have struggled for 34 years. I fortunately am not in a position to have to struggle as hard as my family did because I was fortunate enough to go a little further in education. Um, this proposal was about beginning to face the future. That's something I don't think has been done 20 plus years in the Eastern Area School District. It hasn't been done in the last two that I've been a board member. If anybody remembers last year when I asked before the budget to our superintendent at that time, show us our plan. What is our plan? There was no plan. So for 21 years, taxes have been raised and no plans have been put in place. Because I guess, and I, and I don't know, I wasn't here, I'm assuming people thought they could just go to the taxpayer year after year. That's not what we think. And as Mr. Ryder stated, we now have a plan going forward. We're now looking at a very manageable deficit going into year three that can be uh, addressed through the fund balance if need be. But one thing that will not be able to get fixed going into year three is the education loss these next two years by us voting at a 3.7 or a 3.8. Now some board members might vote for a 3.7, 3.8 as opposed to a 4%. And as I said to them, in my opinion, that's more for getting votes during re-election. You don't have to vote me for re-election. 
I did what I feel is right in preserving the integrity and the educational integrity of this district is very important. We now have controls put in place in our financial office that I mentioned at our press conference that will or have eliminated wasteful spending, that have eliminated the way we've done things. Uh, controls have been put in place that were never put in place in this district before. So the future does look bright, not only financially, but now educationally. Now our administrators who have degrees in education and not finance can focus on the educational piece because for years it's always been about finance. And I think we finally put this district on a path where we don't have to go to the taxpayer every year, but we can still provide a quality education. In closing, there's a quote that I've heard a million times and I don't know who to credit it to because every time I hear it, somebody credits a different person for coming up with it. But it says, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Because as they cut funding to public education, they triple the amount of funding to the state prison systems to build more prisons. If you don't educate the kids, you need a bigger prison. Go to the state, talk to Mr. Corbett, start to start, talk to your state representatives, your state senators. That's who I've been talking to. That's who a lot of board members have been talking to. The cuts are coming from the governor, and they're putting the burden on the local municipalities, the districts, to be the bad guys to raise taxes. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. President, may I uh, yes. throw one more thing out there? Um, I, I also want to share um, a quote uh, because I, I happen to come up under an educator who ingrained quotes into our minds. I'm not going to say any names, uh, but you might be looking at them. Wink, wink. Um, but so, somebody very wise uh, once said to me, never despise small beginnings. Um, and that is, is ringing in my mind at this point because this package that we have spent months and hours and hours upon hours putting together, uh, though, though it seems like, like a big package, I, I certainly consider it a small beginning to something very, 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 very good um, in the future. Uh, as it was stated by uh, the president, it's been stated in the past by the superintendent, this is uh, the beginning of a change that this district has not seen in a very, very, very long time. Um, and to, I guess I have to use a word like nitpick, uh, very small, minute details, uh, of this thing, I, I just think is is, is not the uh, correct thing to do. Um, I don't think it's a surprise. I will be a yes vote uh, for this proposal um, because it is just that it's a it's a proposal. It, it is it is the small beginning to a major positive change in this district. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no further comments. I have a motion in the second, and I will just uh, remind everybody a yes vote will be to approve the MOU into the uh, proposal that we entered into uh, with the teachers union. A no vote would obviously uh, uh, shoot that down. So at this time, all those in favor? Roll call. Roll call. I'm sorry, I forgot Mr. Vandenberg asked for roll call. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Buscemi? Yes. Mr. Fainel? No. Mrs. Ellison? Kerry? Wow, we lost it right before the vote. I'm a yes for the contract. Do you have that? Can you give me one second, please, Joan? I apologize. I apologize. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, we are currently uh, doing a roll call vote 
And so far, you have Bob. Uh, Mr. Buscemi and Mr. Fainel. Mr. Buscemi and Mr. Fainel are both yeses. And now we're going to the third person. Frank, does she understand it for the agreement? The memorandum of agreement? For the, for the agreement, yes. Uh, hold on one second, Carrie. Uh, Joan's going to call the next name. Oh, yes, it is you, uh, Miss Ellison, and you are a, I'm sorry. No. Thank you. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Obi? Yes. Ms. Price? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Vanderberg? Yes. Mr. Pinnebone? Yes. Eight yes, one no. That's eight yes, one no. The motion passes. Letter B. Can I have a motion for retirement? So move with regrets where appropriate. Can I have a second? second. Give me a second. Discussion? All those in favor? That's too many. Aye. 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 Opposed? We're going to take letter C, letter D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. You can, Can I have a motion? Mr. Pennebone, no, in the alphabet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? And Frank. I'm sorry. Before you do, one question on O. O. Do those costs cover what our cost of summer school is? I'm going to refer that question to uh, Mrs. DeVitro. Mr. DeVitro, excuse me. It's totally dependent on the enrollment. So, right. how did we do last year? We did we did very well. Uh, we examined both the program at the middle school and the high school. And uh, uh, do you recall what uh, what the results of that? I think we broke even in both cases. It may have been a slight expense. Yeah. Could we get a copy of that report from last year? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> right. Right. Correct. Thank you. Are there any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Right. I'm going to take out these grievances. Uh, we're just going to go through one at a time. Um, can I have a motion for letter P? Accept to accept the, uh, the administrator's recommendation. Frank, would you mind if I did put them all together with the wording such that it's to accept the administrator's recommendation on all the grievances as listed P through V? Is there any objections with anybody from the board? No. Then we will take... Uh, letter P down to and including V. We will also take 11A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, 12A, <coughs> and B. We'll stop at finance. I'll, I'll order my motion to go with all those. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number 13, finance. We're going to take letter A, B, 
C D E F G H I and I'm going to stop at I. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to take letter J separately. It is the motion to approve the 1415 Eastern Public Library budget. The reason I'm taking it separately, um, obviously, we need to vote on that to go forward with our budget. However, the uh, hard copy just came yeah. to the board today. Um, just there was. A Can I just? I just want to add uh, on the library budget. This um, this was on the docket to be uh, presented at a committee meeting February, March, April. Um, I think if you recall, there has been some discussion over the years on the actual cost of the library budget versus the tax revenue generated. Uh, we did have those conversations uh, with Ms. Docker, who's in the audience, by the way. Um, and uh, for the 13, or for the 14 15 school year, we've come to an agreement where the numbers all match up, and we are going to continue our discussions in the fall um, that will ensure that we move ahead uh, in, in a better in a planning mode. Uh, the reason why that this was not presented by Ms. Docker in, uh, at an earlier committee meeting is, quite frankly, my fault because I kind of fell off my radar to present it to the board. So, if there are any questions, Ms. Docker is in the audience. And I will also uh, make sure to point out that the revenue that she's asking for from the district or the taxpayers is uh, no increase from the previous year. Any other comments? If there are no objections with this, I'd ask for a motion. Motion. Second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Letter K, motion to approve the adoption of the final budget for the 14-15 school year as presented on the attached resolution. So moved. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Did you get that, John? Bob Fain on Kerry were no. All right. Letter L. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number 14. Letter A and B are motion to cast ballots. Uh, for um, or the annual election for the CIU 20 board members and for the Community College Board of Trustees election. Uh, can I have a motion? Frank, do you want to do C and D as well? I'll do all. I'll make a motion for Will all. Will you? Okay. Is there a second for that? Yes. Second. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. We're going to take uh, all of miscellaneous. Uh, motion was Mr. Fainel. Second was Mr. Monahan. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number 15. Is there anyone from the public who would like to be heard on non agenda items only? Anybody that would like to speak on non agenda items? All right. Hearing none, number 16. Any other business from board members at this time? Oh, I'm sorry. Some may know, some may not know. About four weeks ago, I suffered um, four major blood clots that I was not be, um, able to be here, but I thank all and everybody for their calls, their emails, their concerns, their prayers, that um, I was in bad shape and I didn't know how bad I was in, but I just thank you for your, for your patience with me and um, I'm back, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? 
At this time, I'd like a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed?